So the other day, I was just chilling in school during German class until I heard the teacher say that we'd have to read the whole five books for our final exam. And it's not like these are short novels or anything. Each book is like 300 pages long. Like how in a million years is that humanly possible? Anyways, since you know I'm full well not gonna read that many books, I've been thinking about another approach on how to not fail my finals. And during my research, I stumbled across a website called Library Genesis. This is a website where you can find pretty much any book that exists on this planet in PDF format. Now for legal purposes, the application we're building today doesn't host any files and all files are deleted after their processing. Any legal issues should be taken up with libgen, not me. And since listening to an audiobook is way easier than actually reading it, and you can do it while multitasking, I created an app that can turn literally any book into an audiobook. Here's how. First, I chose the text stack. This time I used a combination of Next.js and Electron called Nextron. If you don't know, Electron is a framework that you can use to build native desktop apps using only JavaScript. Next, instead of using the normal Next.js API routes for my backend, I came across a better solution, and that is Python scripts. Believe it or not, we can include Python scripts in our app by adding it to our Electron Builder YAML file like this. And in that scripts directory, we can add as many Python files as we want to. For now, I just added one called main.py, and also a shell file called runner.sh. This will help us execute our Python files with ease. But in order to use these scripts, we need to make use of IPC, also known as inter-process communication. IPC refers to the mechanisms processes use to share data with each other. In this case, our two processes will be the Electron app and our Python scripts. Each IPC call has a channel and a listener, which will be our callback function once we receive anything on the respective channel. In this case, we have a channel called run sh, which will run our Python script with any additional arguments. We will have multiple events, such as to fetch books with the provided title or to generate an audiobook. I won't explain how the Python script works in fine detail, but here's the basic outline of it. First, we get all the arguments from the CLI using the sys package. The first argument is the action we would like to complete. In this case, we have two main actions available, fetch books and read book. We can then parse the arguments and pass them to their respective functions. To my surprise, there's actually a package called libgen API, which is a wrapper for the official free API from library Genesis. We can use this to search for books and temporarily download them. The way the audiobook is actually generated is pretty straightforward. First, we have to find the book to be generated again, download it using the resolve download links method from libgen an API and then writing the response buffer into a PDF file. After that, we can use the tick up package to parse the entire text from the PDF and save it into a variable. We then need to create a list of text chunks that are 500 characters long each. This is necessary so the text to speech engine won't throw an error later because the text is too large. We can then initialize our audio files list and look through the chunks. Here, we call a function called do TTS, which will generate the speech from the given text chunk and return the path to the MP3 file. Now, regarding the TTS, there's multiple engines to choose from. Edge TTS for the edge Levin Labs for the rich, and Google's TTS for the poor. Obviously, I chose HTTS as a default. I'm sorry, I don't actually condone brain rot, it's just funny to imitate the Rizzlers sometimes. <coughs> Anyways, we can then concatenate our audio files with MoviePy and boom, we have the entire audiobook ready. Last but not least, let's actually create the frontend. This isn't particularly difficult as well, you just have to know the IPC syntax. I also added a model to show the user what the program is doing and our application is finished. I tested it out and it worked fine. However, there was one problem. It takes way too long to complete. For a 200 page book, it took the app 4 hours to generate the audiobook. And that's not so productive anymore, is it? So I added multi-threading and this made it much much faster, taking only 30 minutes minutes with the right amount of threads. The link to the GitHub repo is in the description below. If you want to chat with me and my community, join the Discord, and until next time. Bye bye!